It's the new season on Sunday morning, and here again is Jane Pauley. Something big happened 50 years ago this Tuesday. Tracy Smith is in conversation with actor and entrepreneur Gwyneth Paltrow. When you were, let's say, 20, 30 years old, how did you see what you'd be doing at 50? I don't think I thought about it. I thought, you know, 50 is like you're dead at that point. <laughs> okay, dying. she's clearly far from dead, but Gwyneth Paltrow, who will indeed turn 50 this week, yeah. is already well into a second life. So you beat everybody to the office, basically. I usually beat people to the office. <laughs> She's founder and CEO of the lifestyle brand Goop. It's a website. I founded Goop 13 years ago to unearth cutting edge ideas that could really help us optimize our lives. TV shows. We thought it was about time that we take this approach to sex and intimacy. And lots of products aimed at making you feel and look good. The Goop flagship store is in Santa Monica, California, where Paltrow was raised by mom, actress Blythe Danner, and dad, producer-director Bruce Paltrow. Growing up watching her mom, Paltrow knew she wanted to act, and success came early. <gasps> oh, happy dagger. This is thy sheath. <laughs> there rest. Let me die. She won an Academy Award for Best Actress for 1998's Shakespeare in Love. And you won an Oscar at 26. I know, it's crazy when I think about that now. At the time, I thought I was like a full adult, you know? <laughs> what do you think that did to your mind? <laughs> <You know? laughs> In what way? Well, I think to reach that kind of like pinnacle at that age and have that much scrutiny and attention and then it's like no matter what you do after that, you can't really win, right? It's like you have a few years of, it's like nothing's gonna live up to that, and it's just a lot to hold. She continued to star in movies for the next decade. This is Marge Sherwood. Um, sorry, what is it? Ripley. How do you do? How do you do, Marge? How long do you intend to stay here? I don't know. Are you ever coming home? Maybe not. Here. Just avoiding government agents. Are you by yourself? Where'd you get that dress? I, oh, it was a birthday present from you, actually. Oh. But her father's untimely death in 2002 put her on a new path. When did you start caring about wellness? <laughs> I'll tell you exactly. When my father got cancer. And I was helping him one day, you know, feeding him with a syringe and feeding tube. And I struck me like, what, what is in this can that I'm injecting directly into his stomach. And it was the first time I made a connection between food, wellness. I'll never forget that moment. When I started Goop in 2008, I was like, my calling is something else besides, you know, making out with Matt Damon on screen or whatever. <laughs> she started researching and sharing what she learned, and it turned into the website Goop. Her initials plus two O's, because she'd heard successful internet companies have double O's in their name. What all do you do in here? Our scientists come in here, there's lots of mixing and testing and textures and fragrances. Today, the company's reported to be a $250 million business. It's also a controversial one. Some doctors and scientists have slammed Goop and Paltrow for recommending methods and products that aren't scientifically proven. What do you say to people who say that you're promoting pseudoscience? I genuinely don't understand where that comes from because we don't do that. We've never done that. I mean, especially when we started, there were so many modalities and ways of achieving wellness that had no scientific backing, but that have worked in India for thousands of years or worked in China. So I think it was like a way to take shots at us. but. There's nothing that we talk about that's actually that wacky. Oh, come on, it's a little, some of it's maybe a little wacky. Okay, like what? Maybe the egg. Goop used to say that a $66 jade egg inserted vaginally could regulate hormones and tighten the pelvic floor. They were investigated by a California medical task force for false claims in 2018 and settled the case for $145,000. 
They admitted no wrongdoing, but offered full refunds and tweaked the product description. And they're still selling the egg online. There's a whole industry now around strengthening your pelvic floor. We were just early. <laughs> Paltrow says she and Goop are often misunderstood um, because they're ahead of their time. We would talk about something and the internet would freak out and then, you know, six months later or two years later it would be widely adopted. Give me an example. Well, the gluten-free thing is, you know, a perfect example of that. People thought that was totally nuts. You know, there are a bunch of examples of it where at the time people were like, oh, that Gwyneth. Yeah, this crazy girl talking about, you know, gluten-free or getting a nice divorce. Yes, the divorce. When Paltrow and musician Chris Martin announced their conscious uncoupling in 2014, eyes rolled. But they've raised their two kids together while remaining good friends. I mean, as much as people said, oh, conscious uncoupling, you guys really did figure it out. I think we did. I think we did. And he's completely my family, and I love him. And he would do anything for me. I would do anything for him. We would do anything for our kids. We really did commit to wanting our children to be as unscathed by the divorce as possible. Paltrow now has a blended family with husband, TV producer Brad Falchuk, and his two kids. Her oldest, Apple, just left for college. How's that? Oh, wow. That is... You know, I know it sounds nuts, but it, it's, it feels almost as profound as giving birth. As and as she approaches another milestone, Gwyneth Paltrow seems to be handling it well. As a woman, you turn 50 and maybe we all give ourselves permission to be exactly who we are and we stop trying to be what other people are expecting us to be and we kind of exhale into this other thing. Have you given yourself permission to be who you are? Yes, but it's taken me time.